What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the second episode of the Deep Drive into Left Field podcast. My name is Jack Azula Heron, otherwise known as MLB Nerds on Instagram and TikTok. Fuck my life. Uh, and I'm here with my co-host, Ryan Garcia. Today's Yo. podcast, we're going to be discussing a multiple, multitude of topics, uh, including free agency signing, <laughs> trades, and we'll even go with the trivia that we did last week. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. Going over our first move of the day, the Yankees on Sunday acquired Jamison Tyone, right-handed pitcher from the Pittsburgh Pirates, in exchange for uh, Miguel Yahure, Cannon Smith, Ronzi Contreras, and Miguel Escado. Uh, I know, you know, as Yankee fans, Ryan and I were incredibly happy with this trade. I'll let him go more in depth on his uh, thoughts when, uh, when you know, it's him. I'll talk about what I had to say first. Uh, for the Yankees, I think this is an incredible move. I think they didn't give up too much. And Tyone is going to be my dark horse Cy Young candidate pick. You can call me biased. I really don't give a fuck. Uh, but he's definitely someone who can take a big jump because of his velocity and his potential spin on his slider. Uh, Tyone, the big risk with him is that he's coming off uh, a Tommy John surgery, which would be his second. And he's also a cancer survivor. Not that it has much to do with it. It's just something interesting to note. Congrats to him. Ryan, what were your initial thoughts on the Tyone trade? Well, I'm going to push back a little bit because I'm the, I'm the biggest town supporter here, but I'm going to push back a little bit on the whole dark horse Cy Young thing because, Are? I mean, I think you already have the better pitcher in his own team in uh, Cole. You can make the argument Kluber, if he comes back healthy, is going to be better than Cy Young. Um, I, I don't think he can outpitch. Uh, I don't know if he can outpitch Giolito in the central. I don't know if he can outpitch. Um, I mean, if maybe if Bauer's an angel, maybe Bauer's going to be better than him. I mean, Bauer's I, I would – yeah, that, that's a little bit closer. I, I, I want to talk to, I, I want to kind of, that was kind of going to be part of my point that I think Tyone, Tyone is, can be as good as Bauer next year. And the prospect cost is going to be nothing because of the fact that Tyone also, he had a couple quotes talking about how he's going to, he wasn't focusing on a sinker. He's going to be more fastball heavy. Um, he, he, his slider is moving less like a cutter, more like a true slider. He, and he already generates a ton of spin on all those pitches. And he mentioned he got more spin on them. So the idea of Tyone, cause in 20, um, in 2019, he had 2,473 rotations per minute on his slider and 2,328 on his on fastball. The idea of that going up with his fastball being 95, 96, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw a bit, uh, I, I saw a tweet where it was like, he, he touched 99 at some point in a bullpen or something like that. But he, I know he was going back to his normal velocity this guy could be really, really good. And just him saying, I'm not going to be sinker. Uh, I'm not focused on my sinker. makes me so happy. Like I do not like pitchers. Like not that I do not like pitchers, but I don't like pitching coaches who push sinkers on starting pitchers. And like, you should not be a power sinker pitcher. Like that's just not a thing you should be strikeout guys. That's what you should be focusing on today. Strikeouts are the most effective way to get outs. And what Tyone is doing, he can end up being better than his 2018 self, which was a pretty good pitcher. Yeah, and I, I say Cy Young, and I say Dark Horse, meaning he's not going to be my favorite. He's going to be my Dark Horse pick, which seems pretty reasonable. Um, with Tyon also, you got to consider Garrett Cole is going to be giving him the stuff, be giving him the the good, you know, uh, performance-enhancing substance, not the performance-enhancing, excuse me, the foreign it substances. Does, technically. It is technically performance-enhancing, but the foreign substances that clearly work, uh, hopefully Cole will be supplying the entire team with that. Uh, in particular, Tyon, I think that can generate even more uh, revolutions per minute. And I think it'll make Tyone even better. And I hope same thing with Kluber because clearly Cole's got this shit down to, you know, science. He's got the the connection. Apparently it was leaked that he has the connection to get all this stuff. And it's like the best formula you could possibly have. It's probably what Bauer was using because he uses it clearly. Um, and I don't have a problem with that, really. I don't. I think every pitcher should be using it because of the competitive advantage. And they do. almost the entire league uses, <laughs> uses it as it is. Yeah. And punishments are not enforced. So at the end of the day, I also think, with Matt Blake, I really think Tyon's in a great situation in New York with former teammate and current best pitcher in baseball besides Chris Sale, Garrett Cole. Uh, I think I think they're in, I think Tyron's in good hands. I agree. Uh, I, can't, I I'm so pumped that he's a Yankee. That's my boy. Like if anyone's if if anyone saw my live, like I was so pumped. That's the most excited I've been in a very long time. The last time I was that excited, I actually yeah, it's been like it's been a couple months. This is this, I'm. Well, over Yankee news, uh, other stuff, yeah. But over Yankee news is probably the most excited I've been in a while. Raid the tie-on trade. Brian, what would you say? Who, who, was the, who was the winner of this trade? Was there a clear winner? Was there, you know, was it pretty even? Who would you say won this trade? I don't think there's a clear winner. I think both teams come off this looking pretty good. Like the Pirates, I understand, look, I understand that the Pirates might be giving away a pitcher who can turn out really well, but they weren't going to do that to tie-on. You know what I mean? 
Like, I don't think they're going to be able to fix Tyone like that. Um, they fixed Musgrove, but I don't know if they can fix Tyone. And it, look, you're going to get something for him when his value is probably at his lowest. So I'm glad they didn't take a gamble because he could have ended up like not panning out halfway through the season. They could have got nothing for him. So they get, they're getting, they got, I think in total 14 prospects for Musgrove, Bell, and Tyone. So they're, they're, they're making the right moves here. Uh, I like the Azure. I think he's a pretty solid prospect. Um, Kamen Smith, he's been well, well regarded offensively. He's pretty young as well. So I really like what the Pirates are doing in terms of getting prospects. And I think the Yankees get the start of they need. So it's a, it's an even split. Yeah, I mean, as a Yankees fan, I'm pretty thrilled with the return we gave up. Uh, you know, Yehure, he's probably going to be in the bullpen this year, or I really don't know because he was a 40-man guy. I mean, the clear 40-man roster spots as it is. Um, but I, I definitely think the Yankees end up winning this trade just because of Tyler's potential. But Yahore, he's okay. I don't think he's very special. I think Contreras is the most interesting part of this deal. Uh, Smith's going to be okay. I don't know too much about Escoto. But uh, I think, like I said, like you were saying, I kind of agree with you in the fact that that he kind of needed to be traded, absolutely needed to be traded. Uh, I think they potentially could have gotten more from the Angels just because the Angels are so desperate for a pitcher and the Yankees had Cole, Kluber, Montgomery. The Yankees have a lot of pitching depth. Yeah. I I think that's definitely overlooked by a lot of people because – uh, you know, they, they don't have the flat, the biggest, I wouldn't say they were good. I'm not going to say they were bad because they were really good last year. Top five in skill and the ERA. Um, but I definitely think that Tyone uh, is going to break out with the Yankees. Uh, but it, yeah, I agree. It was the right thing for the Pirates to do trading him. Uh, what do you think this means going forward for New York? Cause you know, obviously they're pretty much the favorites, you know, before this trade and, you know, even after this trade, I'd say they're, they're probably still the favorites. They obviously, they got better. You think the Yankees are still the favorite in the AL East and the American League? Oh, I think they solidified themselves at this point as, at least in my opinion, they're in that top three in baseball discussion. Like, they're up there. They, I think they're solidified winning the uh, – I think they solidified not winning the American League because you, you have to play the games. Um, but you've solidified yourself to be the favorite. Um, there's no excuses this time. Uh, I don't think there's a roster comparable to yours. You've been the best at asset managing, uh, arguably in your, uh, league, in your league. Not a lot of teams in your league have been spenders. The only team that has been a spender with the White Sox. And uh, they have to make such a, gra- a large leap in order to get to where you are. Uh, and you got better. So, th- so they had to take a large leap to try to get to where you were. They didn't get anyone. No, they didn't get a superstar player. Um, the be- the closest thing they got to that was Hendricks, but that's a reliever, so it's the least valuable position um, on your on the uh, roster. Uh, so I don't think there's an excuse this time. If the Yankees don't win the pennant, it's a massive disappointment. Uh, it's a bigger disappointment than 2020 because they got cold, but you know it's a COVID season, this and that. This year, if they do not win the pennant, it will be the biggest disappointment of the season for any team, unless the Dodgers or Padres fail to make the NLC. Well, maybe no, if the Dodgers fail to make the NLC, yes, maybe, but if the Yankees do not win the pennant, it will be the biggest failure in recent memory. And it will completely like destroy their reputation across the league. Yeah. I, I kind of agree with you on everything. And uh, though I think, and this is a good segue into our next topic, which is the blue Jays signing George Springer to a six year, $150 million deal. I think other teams are trying to compete with the Yankees, but they're still not there yet. Uh, as for the Blue Jays, they made a couple of signings. They they signed Springer. They signed Marcus Simeon. Uh, but let's talk about Springer real quick. You know, in my opinion, he's a top 15 player in baseball. I think you put him anywhere from top 10 to top 25. He's an elite outfielder. I don't really give a flying fuck about your bang, bang, trash cans, buzz, buzz. He, he's still an elite player. He put up like, what, 100, 150 or more WC. It was like 176. I'm not entirely sure. I should have his fan graphs. He's been elite. And I'll do it. Hold on. Let me let me pull up his WRC plus last season. Um, I, think, I don't think it was last season. It was that it was he was that elite. It was 2019, I think that you're thinking. No, he about. was elite both years. Hold on. Let me no, I know it was good in 2020, but I think 2019 was that was that crazy year he had. Oh, yeah, he, my bad. Last he had like year, a he had like a six wins above replacement in like 120 games. Yeah, right? last season he had an 146 WRC plus. Uh, he wasn't a great defender, but no, it's okay. He was okay. He has he has eight out of one out eight outs above average since 2018. In the outfield, yeah, so. yeah, he's, he's, he's a okay. solid defender. Uh, 20, 2019, yeah, you're right. Um, if he played more games, he'd probably declare MVP. But he yeah. six point five uh, F four, one fifty seven WRC plus. He's an elite player. I don't really care about the trash cans and everything like that. Twenty seventeen, he was actually worse than twenty nineteen, but he was still good. He's been great pretty much every year except for twenty eighteen, where he had a bit of a down year. But it is what it is, you know. That's definitely an outlier. Uh, I I think it's just a great pickup for the Blue Jays in general. Uh. What do you think, Ryan? 
Uh, I mean, look, I think he was the premier free agent for them. He was the best free, the best free agent they could have acquired. Um, and again, look, he's an elite hitter and a, he's a really good defender. Um, and I think that for at least Toronto, he gives them someone, you know, just, he gives them another big piece and he, he, they put, he puts them in the comfortably in the wild card, just at least in the discussion for the wild card. I don't think they will win the wild card or get to the wild card, but they're in the discussion now. And that's important. You know, you don't want to be in that part of the, re- they're in that part of the rebuild where they not, need to start having results. And without an expanded playoffs, there's not that easy route to the eighth seed. You now have to build a really, really good roster to get there because the American league is very top heavy. Um, the West is not very good, but there's going to be a division winner there. Uh, you have two really good teams in the East. You have two good teams in the Central. You're going to need to find a way to get yourself into the playoffs by beating out one of the guys in your division or beating out a guy in a, a team in, a, in another division. So this is a move they have to make this to be really competitive next year. Yeah, and I feel like the Pirates as well. You know, you trade Jamison Tyon, you trade Joe Musgrove a couple of weeks ago. Um, at this point, they still have a couple solid players on their roster. Richard Rodriguez. Uh, he's definitely one of them, uh, Brian Reynolds and Adam Frazier. I don't know how uh, how much they'd want to move Reynolds just because his value is probably at a, an all-time low. He was not very good last season. He was good in 2019. Uh, depends on how they see him projecting going forward, and he's still pretty young. But I think the two main guys here that you got to look at and consider the Pirates probably move are Adam Frazier and Richard Rodriguez. So, Ryan, I know you like Richard Rodriguez a lot. I don't know about Adam Frazier, but what do you think the Pirates should do with those two pieces? Um, I think that what your best bet is, cause you're not going to, you're not going to uh, get a lot for them. I think later down the road, cause next year, Richard Rodriguez, I think is going to be on a one-year deal left. And I think that same thing goes for Frazier. And since Adam Frazier as an infielder is really just a utility guy, he's a discount Tommy La Stella, uh, cause he can't hit that well. Uh, but he can defend pretty well. So, I mean, I guess he's like a reverse Tommy La Stella. We can act, he didn't defend, but he can't really hit. Uh, but point is, uh, this is the time you got to move them. You're not, you should not wait to move them as rentals. That is a bad idea. When you have to, a relief pitcher as a rental is worth nothing, basically. Because uh, the relie- relievers aren't really worth much. So I think you put them, you can try to sell Richard Rodriguez to a team who's trying to get a relief pitcher but doesn't have the money to spend. Uh, you can move Frazier to a team in need of infield depth. I think a team like the Athletics could be one of those teams. They do not have a great infield situation in the shortstop and second base position. You can get Adam Frazier, sell them to him. He's cheap. Uh, Richard Rodriguez could help a couple teams that need bullpen help a, 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 a team like the Braves who, who have lost, a, who have Shane Green, lost Darren O'Day, uh, lost Shane Green to free agency. I, I, he hasn't signed yet. Mark Lance hasn't signed yet, but Darren O'Day already signed with the Yankees, which we'll get into later. Uh, so that's three relievers that are gone and they're going to have to replace, uh, at least O'Day. So, you know, you could be in a situation where you're trying to talk to the Braves who are trying to be aggressive and you go, Hey, look, here's Richard Rodriguez. Give up some assets, whatever you can get for him. You know, you got to move these guys now. You cannot move them while they're rentals. The Pirates cannot be stupid here. Do not move them while they're rentals. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I think they they should be calling teams around. And I'm sure people, I'm surprised Richard Rodriguez wasn't in the Yankees trade. Um, yeah. Like they were looking for another reliever. I think Richard Rodriguez is definitely a guy. Teams would want, he's incredibly cheap. He's controllable. So I would not be surprised at all. If they're not moved now, they're moved at the deadline. Um, and they're, they're solid pieces. You know, Rodriguez is good. Frazier's definitely more of a utility guy than anything at this point. Uh, I wouldn't want him. I don't think he's really a starting second baseman on a contending team, but he's definitely a backup guy, like a like a better Tyler Wade, a significantly better Tyler Wade because Tyler Wade sucks. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's more of a utility guy. So, I th- yeah, I was gonna say I think he's like a dis he's like a discount Colton Wong at second base, where they're both good defenders, but Wong is a is not an atrocious hitter like Frazier, who has not been consistent at all in his MLB career. Yeah, I mean, if you overuse the stat expected weighted on base average, like many people do. Me. Um, people would say Frazier's better than Wong, which isn't the case, but um, he's still solid. Like there's no doubt that he's solid and uh, he'll make a valuable uh, addition for some teams. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, the Blue Jays signed Marcus Simeon to a one year, $18 million contract. So that's roughly what the uh, qualifying offer is. Um, the athletics actually refused to give Simeon the qualifying offer. They didn't refuse, but they didn't give it to him because they're poor, they're not poor, actually. I'm sorry. They just refuse to spend money. They, they, John Fisher is the seventh wealthy uh, owner in terms of net worth, I'm pretty sure. And he refuses to spend money. So um, Marcus top Simeon. Top five scumbag, too. That, that as well. Uh, top five. Uh, yeah, so, sorry. Um, Simeon goes to the Blue Jays. One year, $18 million. I'll start off how I feel about this. Because I know Ryan and I feel a bit different about it. I think it's a solid pickup for the Blue Jays. I don't think Simeon should be playing. Uh, second base should probably be playing shortstop, and then you move Bichette over to third. Um, at the end of the day, Simeon's outfield average 
are a very good shortstop, but I think those will go up playing next to a worse third baseman with Bichette. And I don't know how productive that is necessarily in terms of defensive value, but at the end of the day, uh, all defensive metrics are kind of wonky in their own way. So uh, I think obviously one-year deals, I have never really seen an overpay for a one-year deal. There's definitely a chance Bauer gets that, uh, but I, there's really it's hard to overpay for a one-year deal. And especially for a guy like Simeon, um, who was top three in MVP voting, almost pretty much an eight win season in 2019. I don't know if he can do that again. He probably can't um, definitely more of an outlier year, but he can still be very solid for the blue Jays and an eight, $18 million over one year. I think it's very, I think it's very uh, good for the blue Jays for Simeon, It's pretty solid. I mean, I don't know how much he could have gotten for a multi multi-year deal just because of the season he was coming off of sub 100 WRC plus not a great fielder last year. But um, I think it was a pretty solid move for both parties at the end of the day. So, Ryan, what were your thoughts on the Simeon signing? Well, I mean, I completely disagree with the idea it's a good signing because if you're going to sign someone, like if you would have mentioned it the way you did, okay, I guess that that makes sense, right? But they're not going to do that. They're putting Simeon at second base. Why would you sign a shortstop to play second base? That like, why would you, you're paying money basically to a guy who's probably at second base going to be worse than Colton Wong. You're going to probably sign Sim. So you're signing Simeon to be a worse Colton Wong at second base when Colton Wong is a free agent and his incumbent team is, is, is crying poor. So you can probably pry him. They declined his offer. So their, the relations with him and his incumbent team are not great. This is not like DJ LeMay or like the blue, okay, the blue Jays didn't get him, but DJ favored the Yankees. The incumbent team was the favorite the entire time. Colton Wong got his option declined. So he's not on great terms with the Cardinals. And yet they go, let's sign a shortstop for $18 million, which you were right. It's not an overpay. But if you can sign Colton Wong for less money, you have that. Let's say he signed for, you know, $13 million two years, right? Sure, you got the extra year on it. But for that, for this season, it's, it's going to cost you $5 million less. You can put that $5 million towards, A, another reliever, um, a la, you know, an Andrew Chafin or a guy like that, um, or Keone Kella. Uh, or you use that five million and any remaining money, and you bring in a James Paxton to make your rotation pretty good, uh, or keep yourself flexible to go out and trade for a guy like a Cal Hendricks, what they which they have been linked to. Um, you've taken yourself really out of. They, I know that I saw on the score um, that site that uh, they're not going to be big. They're not going to make any more big moves. So that was the last big move, and your last big move was oh, was signing a shortstop. When you desperately needed pitching, you if they think that signing Marcus Simeon for one year, 18 million is better than James Paxton at one year, two, 12 million or two years, 12 million, or even two years, uh, 14 million a year, they're crazy. They needed pitching and they could have gotten a second baseman wherever they needed to, but they went out and signed a shortstop to play second base. I don't understand it. I don't really have a, I understand what you're saying. I just don't really have much of a problem with it just because Simeon's potential to like a boom potential with Simeon, you know, as an eight win player, that's it's been, it's been a ceiling. Like I said, I don't think he'll hit it again but he's got a significantly higher ceiling than Colton Wong. And if they weren't going to go out and get pitching to begin with, because they're confident with what they have now, which they shouldn't be, they should probably go another pitcher, but um, it's whatever. If they wanted a guy like Colton Wong, I really don't see what the point is in downgrading for what an extra, you know, $5 million when you could pretty much spend that. When Semyon's probably, if, if he can put up, you know, 60% of his 2019 year, he's going to be better than hundred percent Colton Wong. So that's just what I think about it. I really don't have too much of a problem with it, especially because I don't think they're done. I mean, I mean, the score, it is what it is, whatever they want to say. I don't know how reliable they are with baseball, um, but they can still easily go out and get a Luis Castillo type guy if they're willing to overpay. And they have the prospects to do it. They have Simeon Wood Richardson. They have Alec Manoa. They have plenty of guys who could, they can go, you know, trade uh, and, and get in their starting pitcher. And you don't have to go sign somebody, you know, Kyle Hendricks. I don't really know how much cap they have left, but before the, the salary bat, I'm pretty sure they have more than $10 million. And then Ken, Hendricks is making what, like, like 12, 13. I'm not entirely sure. Um, either uh, way, yeah, 13, 13. Either way, I, I think there are plenty of moves they can make here because they're not like the Yankees where, you know, they're what $10 million from the cap and they want to save five for free agency. And they need another, like a couple other relievers and they want to back Gardner or whatever. Uh, I think the Blue Jays are in a good spot. And though I think Paxson's a great fit, and I'm not going to count him out with Paxson. I think the Paxson market's been kind of non-existent besides the Blue Jays and the Yankees are probably not going to bring him back at this point. Um, so I, I'm not going to count out Paxson. I do think it was, it was, a, it was a solid move in general. Well, I mean, I, I just checked now. The, the score article was from the press conference. It wasn't just them talking about the rumor. Uh, Mark Chappell okay. himself said the heavy lifting is done. Um, and look, I understand what your point about how Simeon can be really good, but 
like, do we really realistically think at second base he's going to be a better defender than Colton Wong? The answer uh, is he's probably well, not. He's not he's probably not. No, no. So Wong's if he's, better. I, I and, just think hitting wise, he's that much better. Well, oh, hitting wise, he has like a what, 114 weight runs created plus. I think Colton Wong's at, at 100. Simeon's carried a lot by his 2019. If he's closer to that, like 100, let's say he's 110 and Colton Wong's 100, but you replace the, but you're paying him five million less Wong, and you have elite defense, and you get an extra year of him if you want another extra year of him. Of him, uh, it just makes more sense. That five million does go somewhere because they said they're still going to be interested in the pitching market, so you still have more money to go out and splurge on pitching, which you desperately need. So it, to me, it's just I, I, I'm a big believer in you have to manage your assets very well if you have a, if you have a very small amount of assets. And I don't know if how much assets the Blue Jays have left in money because they've already given out the big contract to Springer. They've already given out. Uh, they tried to give out that contract to uh, Brantley. I'm guessing that money went to Simeon. I'm guessing the Brantley money basically went to Simeon, uh, at least AAV wise. And they gave some uh, like five five million to Yates. So I don't know. Uh, it, it's you know. Um, I, we'll have to see. Like, if Simeon's really good, I'll be completely wrong. Uh, but if he's not good, then I'll be right. But that's based on what happened. So we'll have to wait and see. The Philly last uh, yesterday, uh, when you're watching this, probably be two days ago, but the Phillies signed or re signed catcher JT Realmito to a five year, $115.5 million deal, which breaks the record for catcher annual uh, average annual value. Um, I know Ryan and I also have different thoughts on this trade. So I'll go first. I think it was a slight overpay, slight to moderate I, i'd say it was an overpay in general um as catcher in general is a thin position and Rio Mito is definitely the second best catcher in baseball so i understand you want to you, you end up in that front but the phillies have such you know they have so many needs in general their bullpen is so bad i understand they go sign archie bradley they have hector neris and a couple other guys which i think is coming back i think either way it's just they're they're really in a bad spot at this point and to splurge on a guy like Rem Uto when there are so many other needs in this team, center field's probably more of a need at this point. Like Adam Hazley is probably their starter, I think, or uh, I don't know who else. I think I'm pretty sure it's Adam Hazley or Scott Kingry, whatever. Um, they, they have so many other needs pitching wise is, is in, in particular. Um, overall though, Rem Uto obviously is a great player, but I, I you know, I'm, I'm going to beat a dead horse here with Austin Hedges uh, or Tyler Flowers. These are guys that are, Worse, obviously, than Ram Uto, but as, as a, you know, as a catcher, defense is probably similar in terms of values. Offense, and if your team's already pretty solid on offense, which the the Phillies are a pretty solid offensive team, and you want to get a guy that's going to be pretty cheap, like Hedges or Flowers, who are going to put up you know very good defense, who can you know Hedges not going to be a good hitter, but Flowers could be league average, probably no, not league average. I'd say slightly below league average. I think it's probably a better value uh, than signing a guy like Ram Uto, especially giving a guy who's 31 and is a catcher who relies a lot on his, his athleticism, a five-year contract. I, I still not a big fan of that. Um, Ryan, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the, the, the signing? Well, he's 29, not 31. So he'll be signed to his age 34 season. Oh, is. I, and my thoughts are pretty much the same either way. Yeah. But it would have been, I, I guess it's a bit better. No, I thought he was 31. I guess it's a bit, bit better, but uh, continue. But you, you mentioned Tyler Flowers. Tyler Flowers is 35, I believe, right now. And he's still an elite framer. So if he's still elite, if Tyler Flowers can still be an elite framer at the age 35, what would make me think Rio Muto can't be that? And I'm not, and I mean, you're often like, I, I don't know the regression chart, what it looks like for catches, but I'm pretty sure the regression chart isn't drastic enough for you to be a really bad baseball player by age 34. Um, we've seen, I, I'm pretty sure how old, I'm pretty sure Posey's around that age right now. Uh, which if you get one year of him being basically a, uh, what Buster Posey was in 2019, I, he didn't play in 2020 because of COVID because he didn't want to get COVID, uh, which I understand. Um, you get one year of that in that contract. That's pretty good considering he's in the last three years, 118 weighted runs created plus um, prospectus warp of uh, 5.5 per 650 play appearances. He's never really had health issues too too many health issues. Um, he's played 317 games in the last three years. Uh, remember the COVID season makes it. Uh, so you have to go 162, 162, 60. Um, so, I, I mean, I personally think the base running will get worse. At some point, he will obviously become a slower baseball player. But if for the first three years of that deal, he's he's what he's um, a 115 weighted runs created plus great, uh, great defense and an OK base runner. And then the last two years, he's not a good base runner. He's good defensively, but he's an OK hitter. 
you take that because by if you go five years from now, the, there's going to be a new CBA. It's going to be new everything. The twenty three million dollars is not going to look as bad as it looks right now. So I, I mean, I understand why the Phillies did it. Um, I, I they, they, that's their guy. It's like it reminds me a lot with the DJ LeMay situation. They were going to do like all the players wanted him back. I understand why they didn't understand why it was a priority. The organization clearly really likes him, and they put a lot of assets into acquiring him through trade. So I don't see how you would like you let you traded Sixto Sanchez for him. And so it would look really bad if Sixto Sanchez is because they already made the playoffs once the Marlins. You haven't. If Sixto Sanchez kills you for the next five to six years and you don't even have JT on your team, that's going to look really bad. So I, I think he, they did it just to please the fans, basically, which I'm not upset at. I understand that. I think at the end of the day, though, this team has so many other needs. Um, and I'm not like I said, I'm not saying Ramey is a bad player. And I'm not gonna, I'm not saying he's going to be a bad player in H34. I, he's not going to be what he is now. Um, and, and signing a guy like Flowers obviously wouldn't be a multi-year deal. It'd probably be a one-year deal. Same with, I mean, Hedges got like two more years left. Either way, um, I just think that that money they invested in Rio Muto could be better spent elsewhere. And I wouldn't really compare it to the Yankee situation as the Yankees are pretty much set everywhere else. Um, with pitching, they were already fine without Kluber and Tyone. They were okay. Like they, they weren't going to be bottom five in the league. They, they, they were fine. The Phillies bullpen is going to be worse in baseball at this point. The Phillies, uh, or maybe at the worst because they did get Bradley. Um, the Phillies rotation is going to be bottom 10. The, the Phillies, like I said, the bullpen is probably going to be bottom five, bottom 10 at this point. Um, but I just think they could have invested that money so much better in, in other places. And I, I understand what you're saying. Though. I, it's, I'm not saying Remito is such a bad player. I think $23 million for Remito for maybe four years with a better a team that probably just needs a catcher like the, I don't know, not the angels, but just like a team that needs a catcher and has pitching and uh, has pretty much has, has depth because the Phillies lack a lot of depth at all positions. Uh, I think it wouldn't have been too much of a bad signing. I Like I said, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm rambling here, but I don't think it's really a bad signing. I just think it's a slight overpay, just given you know the other options they had where they could have invested the money. Well, I'll push back on one thing. You said that the Phillies are going to be a bottom 10 rotation. They were sixth in skill and track VRA last year, ninth overall in pitching. They were 17th in the bullpen, so I do agree with the whole bullpen thing, but I don't think it'll be a bottom five bullpen. You add Archie Bradley in there. I think the gap between um, 17th and uh, above league average would have been like the Yankees, which were right. The Yankees were at 15th, uh, 4.22. Phillies were at 4.26. I think Archie Bradley puts them around the 4.2 range. If they can get another reliever, uh, you put yourself comfortably average to slightly above average in your bullpen uh the rotation i think is gonna be pretty good um i'm pretty sure efflin had a efflin broke out a little bit in 2020 he showed a lot of good stuff um and you have nola there wheeler is gonna hopefully uh hopefully don't ruin him and they try to get him more to strike to striking guys out more uh those are three so you have nola wheeler efflin that's a pretty that's that's pretty solid uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's going to be a great rotation, but having Nolan Wheeler gives you a good start. Uh, Eflin's pretty solid. They're, if they're, they're sixth in school interactive already, they're extremely unlucky um, and ninth overall in pitching Sierra. So I, I think they could be a good pitching team. Um, granted, uh, it's a short season and Sierra isn't great for really small sample sizes. And they didn't have a, obviously 60 games in a large sample size, but I, I don't think the pitching problems are like worst in the league pitching problems. I think it's more like they're an average pitching team. So I do agree they could have used their assets. So you, you mentioned center field. I think that's an underrated place you need to get someone. Like I desperately think they need to go out and get a guy like Jackie Bradley Jr. who can play elite defense out there. And again, you're right. You got GT here now, so they can their offense is going to be really good. You can sacrifice JBJ going out there and having that 95 way to runs created plus because he's an elite defender. Um, but I don't think their pitching problems are as bad as you pointed them out to be. Well, do you think they're a playoff team at this point? No, not at all. They can't be. The NL is too stacked. Uh, the, someone's going to have to win the Central. This is like the, with, the, with the American League. Someone has to win the West. Someone has to win the Central. Um, and then the East and the other two divisions are just loaded with, two, with some top-heavy teams. So they're not going to be better than the Mets. Not going to be better than the Braves. Um, pro- maybe will be better than the Nationals. Keyword, maybe. Uh, they will not be better than the Padres and they will not be better than the Dodgers. So the Dodgers or Padres will win their division. Uh, one of the four, one of the five central teams, sadly, will win their division. And then one of the East teams will win the division. That will not be the Phillies. Um, and I think one team, one team from each division of the East and West are coming out and none of them are going to be the Phillies because the Padres are going to get one of those spots probably. And either the Braves are going to, the Braves are going to get that other spot if the Mets win the division or the Mets are going to get it and the Braves are going to win the 
win the division. There's no way they're better than the Braves or Mets or Padres or Dodgers next year. You can you can book it, you can clip it, you can say whatever you want. I, they are not being better than any of those four teams. Yeah, I, I actually I actually agree um, with what you, what you had to say there. Pretty much, with all, pretty much all of it. I don't think the Phillies are a playoff team. I think you clearly got the Brewers, and then you got the Cardinals, and then you got the the Reds, and then the Cubs are probably that fourth place team in the NL Central. Pirates are better. And then you have uh, one of them's going to win. I think it's going to be the Brewers. It could be a toss up between those three teams. Cubs are definitely going to point. Um, the, the Brewers and Dodgers, I'm oh, sorry, not the Brewers, the Potters and Dodgers, um, they're going to fight out for them. One of them's going to get their wild card, obviously. And then they'll probably face the Braves. I think the Mets are going to win the division or the Braves are going to win. I don't really know, but it'll be uh, one of those teams. So, yeah, I agree with you. I really don't see them making the playoffs at all. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much where we'll end this part of, our, uh, of this conversation. Yeah. Moving into our, our, our sort of a, a subtopic uh, or sub segment of our uh, free agents and transaction uh, recaps and uh, our opinions on those, I, we're just going to do like a quick rundown of the sort of minor moves. And they're not necessarily minor, but sort of smaller moves. And Ryan, I'm going to stay out of this one. It's going to be all you. You just say right. whether it was a good or bad signing. No explanation, just one word. Hand to Washington. Uh, meh. Out of to Boston? Solid. Gastella to San Francisco? Very good. Simmons to Minnesota? Uh, elite. O'Day to the Yankees? Elite. Luke to the Mets? Elite. I pretty much agree with all those. Um, besides the hand move, I mean, they actually, never mind. I kind of agree with the hand move. It was a bit of an overpay in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Really so, they needed uh, it, but it's an overpay. Yeah. That's all for the uh, transactions portion of our show. We're going to talk about a team in this portion of our podcast. It's the Chicago Cubs. Uh, one of our producers, James Valentinas, is a Cubs fan, and he likes to tell me about how they're going to win the division. In reality, they won't, but uh, that's okay. We can all be delusional at times. So um, Chris Bryant, right? what do you think Chris Bryant's future is? You know, he's expiring deal. He's making about $18 million. You know, he used to be like a top three, third baseman in baseball. At this point, he's probably uh, closer to eight to 10 range. He can play a bunch of positions. What team do you think is going to go out and get him, if any team? He'll be a Cub for the rest of the year. Maybe they'll extend him. Well, Jack, uh, he's going to be sharing a city uh, with uh, the New York Yankees because he's going to be heading down to Queens to go play with the New York Mets. I think it's a lock. I think it's going to happen. I don't see how it doesn't happen. It'll be like a rental kind of thing, like a, like a Machado thing. I don't know if it happens now or at the deadline where like they just pick him up as kind of like a, a mercenary. You know what I mean? They, they both parties know that player is not coming back, but he's going to come in and they're going to try to do everything they can to push and win a title this year because the Cano's contract's coming in next year. So I think they're going to just do it. They're going to try to go get Bryant, just go, you know, dump off a couple of prospects, take on the salary and go try to win a world series right now where, because next year they got a bunch of free agents. So right now they're going to try to go and say, screw it. Let's go win a world series. We can do it right now. And I think it's a lock for the Mets. I don't think there's any other team that's connected to him that can really make the push the Mets can. Yeah. I, I actually agree with you on that. I don't think it's necessarily a lock, but I definitely agree that it's a possibility and adding on the Cubs are also apparently shopping Kyle Hendricks. Um, he's weird. You know, he, he's fucking, I don't understand what he's going on there. He's got going on there. You know, he, he's a ground ball pitcher, but he's an effective ground ball pitcher, which isn't very common. Um, he throws a lot of sinkers, which I don't like, but you know, let, let the man do his thing. Um, I think at this point, you know, Hendricks has also got to be gone at some point. You know, he's on a very team friendly deal. I think the Mets can make a push at him. Um, they could, they might be willing to ship away Peterson. Uh, maybe the no, match probably in the deal. And they take on Bryant's full salary and Hendricks' full salary. And you know, obviously they're probably not going to extend Bryant because you had to extend Conforto and Lindor. Um, but I could see them taking on a guy like Hendricks. Maybe the Cubs want to trade them separately, sort of how the apparently the Yankees touch base um, with the pot Pirates about Musgrove and Tyon before they were shipped separately. Um, sorry about that. Um, but I, I think I could see the Cubs moving them in the same deal or separately. Either way. Um, they'll probably be gone by the deadline because the Cubs are definitely going to rebuild because they're not better than the Brewers or the Reds or the um, Cardinals. Yeah. Um, I think Kyle Hendricks, I think he ends up a Blue Jay. I think they have the best assets to get him. I think, again, it doesn't make sense to put both in a deal because you're going to have to end up getting less. So you can move Bryant to the Mets and then take Kyle Hendricks and move him to the Blue Jays who have a more attractive prospect pool. Um, had the Padres not made the move for Musgrove, I could see Hendricks in, in San Diego. 
Um, maybe the Dodgers make a move at uh, make a push at Hendricks because I don't think their starting rotation is as good as uh, most people make it out to be because Kershaw, Bueller, May, uh, Gonzalez, May. I know they have Price there. They might want to make a push at. They might want to make a push at uh, Hendricks. It could because they, they have a good rotation, but they can go out and make their rotation just extremely good if, if they wanted to go out and do that. Uh, I don't think the Yankees are going to be in play for that. Uh, I don't think it makes sense for the Yankees to go out and trade uh, their prospects to get Kyle Hendricks. Um, even though it make a rotation better, I don't see them doing it. Uh, and so, yeah, I think it's Toronto, the Mets maybe, like you said, and the Dodgers. I think those two, three teams can be a big play for Kyle Hendricks. So uh, now with Simeon and Simmons in the same night gone, that leaves uh, the last guy, by default, the best shortstop on the market, Didi Gregorius, who happens to be Jack's favorite player in all of baseball. Yeah, I love Didi. You know, he, he's got such a good expected tweets, yep. uh, good clubhouse presence, you know? Yes, sir. The flashy with the glove. He's got the good, the good three. He's got a good arm. He's got solid range. He's got a left hand. He's a left handed hitter, which makes him that much better. He, yep. he hits home, he hits pop ups. You can hit home runs. You know, interesting fact, he's so good. He doesn't even need to hit the ball to left field because he's. Never hit an opposite field home run. Oh, Brett damn. Gardner has an opposite field home run in his career. Didi Royce doesn't. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. He, he's not good. He blocked me on Instagram because I said he was not good. And I'll continue to say he's not good because he's a shitty fielder. He's a, a slightly above average hitter. He, he's just not that good. And he wants this guy. He's so delusional. I, I'm, I'm thinking he's a White Sox fan because he wants $30 million over two years. He's not remotely worth that. He's maybe a, a two, three win player, which is, which is fine. But in a COVID market where at, at this point, the only way for him to accumulate war is going to be uh, from higher volume because he's not a good fielder and he's not that good of a hitter. His specialty is hitting pop up second base. Believe me, I've had to sit through as a Yankees fan. I don't really care about his clubhouse presence. You know, it's cool with his artwork. He's got many hobbies. Um, but at the end of the day, producing baseball putting putting a good product on the field is what matters and if you can't do that you're not worth 15 million dollars a year for the Phillies and Reds they put themselves in a tough spot just because they don't have many other options and um, I guess they're gonna have to give Gregorius a contract I would give him no more than one year like eight million dollars at this point um but I I guess I mean there's I guess the Reds could go in-house options try to shift Senzel over to shortstop they really don't have any shortstops there's not much on the market Maybe Jonathan VR going back to the shortstop. I don't know. There's like there are so limited options of the shortstop just because Simmons, Simmons is gone, and uh, so is uh, Semyon. So I, I think it'll be pretty interesting to see what they do. It's gonna be a race, and they're one of them's gonna overpay for him. I know, and I'll laugh at them. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter at my at changes every fucking day, but if you follow me now at Rosenthal two NYY, you'll see my live reaction to him signing. Uh, Ryan, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I, I said this in the last podcast I said, well, I think, well, I was like, the stupidest team out of the ones looking for a shortstop will be the one that signs Didi Gregorius. The stupidest one will be the one that gets Didi Gregorius. And, of course, it was Philly and Cincy, the two stupidest organizations out of the, well, I didn't see the Twins in this market. I think it was out of nowhere that they signed Simmons. Uh, but out of the four teams there, Blue Jays, Twins, uh, Cincy, Philly, the most uh, laughable organization in terms of player uh, acquiring players have been the Phillies and the Reds. Uh, one, I had one interesting proposition for the, for the Reds to get a shortstop. Uh, me and uh, me and uh, David uh, were talking uh, last night on Discord. Right? What if the Rays acquired Sony Gray and in the deal they set a couple prospects, but they also send them Willie Adamas to give him a, a young, controllable shortstop? He's not very good either. But you would rather have Adamus is basic is very similar to Didi. They're both not good defensively and both overachieve their batted ball data. So they would just not have to pay a shortstop, and the Phillies would by default have to retain Didi. So yes, the Reds don't get an elite shortstop in Adamus. That's not an elite shortstop or a very good shortstop, but they at least don't have to pay Didi $15 million a year. And they want to get rid of Gray anyways. So that's a win-win for both parties. Uh, let me know what you think about that. That's pretty, that's pretty, I never really thought of that because Adamus kind of sucks and uh, it's kind of Didi, but yeah, probably, exactly. But uh, probably a bit worse. He's younger, he's controllable, he's cheaper though. So I guess there's a plus in that. I'm not really sure if the Reds will end up moving gray at this point. I feel like if they were going to do it, they already did. They're not moving with the deadline. Um, but yeah, that'd be pretty interesting to see. Um, they I don't think it's very realistic, but I think it's an interesting proposition. 
surprised Philly didn't sign the uh, the uh, shorts the uh, shorts up the Padres got. Uh, he, uh, shoot, I'm really bad at print. How did I forget his name? Hassan Kim. Kim. There we go. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't make a play. I mean, you would think that they like I would have gone with him over Didi because at least he's 25, right? 25, 26. So you could consider him like a prospect or a young guy who's going to be really controllable and cheap. They uh, both of these teams just put themselves in a really bad situation. My God, you have to pick between Didi Gregorius and like a minor league player. Oh God, this is not good for them. Moving on to our last segment with transactions um, and signings and, and shit like that in our podcast today. We're going to be talking about the starting pitching market, which includes Trevor uh, Bauer and Jake Odorizzi at this point. So uh, just real quick, where do you guys think, where, where do you think that those guys are going to land, Ryan? Bauer will be a, I think he's probably going to be a Met or an Angel. I'm not sure. I think those are the two teams that are in the biggest play. I heard the tweet about the Angels trying to, being able to overpay, but I don't think that's enough for me to say the Mets wouldn't overpay. So I always put the Mets in there. They're just, filthy rich i guess so they i think they can get bauer i think it's a 50 50 uh i wouldn't really uh may, maybe the white Sox are gonna make a sneaky push like i, I if like i i don't know if, if you saw the the bet uh the the, the odds because the, the uh, plus odds on yeah. uh where he would sign i would 100 percent put some money on that white Sox bet because that white Sox that's a really like they if you put on the yankees that's really bad because they have really good odds for some reason and he'll never be a yankee yeah it's like burning uh, money it's, it's yeah, it's crazy. basically setting your money on fire. Uh, I think Paxton goes to Toronto because uh, I just think – I don't think anyone – or Houston. I think Houston could be a sneaky – I would – like, okay, the baseball fan in me says that he can be a Houston Astro and just, like, kill the Yankees and haunt them forever. I don't want that to happen, obviously, but I think that is going to happen. Like, I could – like, the 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 uh, masochist in me is saying he's going to be an uh, Astro, come back and haunt us in the ALCS and, like, throw a seven-inning shutout. I think Oda Rizzi goes uh, back to the Twins. I think they 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 meet up in the middle, and he goes back to the Twins. The Twins got better defensively. Um, that should help Oda Rizzi, uh, his ERA. He's going to overperform it probably, but that's because of good defense. He has Donaldson and Simmons in the left side of the infield. So those are my predictions. Yeah, I have to agree with you with Oda Rizzi. I think he'll go back to the Twins or the Angels if they miss it on Bauer. Yeah. Um, I think the you, you know it is like a match made in heaven, you know. Hmm a team that loves to overpay players and Trevor Bauer who wants to get overpaid. So I think the White Sox are going to end up with Trevor Bauer. Um, That's their thing. They like to overplay players. They like to overrate their, their fan base likes to overrate their players as well. Um, Besides Yasmin, I feel so bad for Yasmin Grandel. I I hope he gets out of there because I cannot be, I cannot be, I cannot imagine being a part of that insufferable organization. They don't even like him. What? The broad, like, I don't know if you know, the broadcast booth was like when Jason Kennett free agency, oh, you could just platoon him with Grandal. I feel so bad for him. He's the, he's arguably the best position player on the team. Like he is, he the, is best the best, best position. you know, he is. Now I think about it. Maybe Robert becomes better than him if he's uh, develops offensively because he's just that good of a defender. But Maybe. Grandal has been their best position player and he gets no love. Like everyone's like, oh, well, he can't defend. McCann was a better defender. He you can't hit either. Look, I mean, look, these look, sound like telling me these are white Sox fans telling me that adam eaton is an impact signing he's not good he's he was never good he's worse than brett gardner the thought process behind the adam eaton signing made no sense the thought process besides giving a a fucking reliever four years 54 million dollars also made no sense given that there are guys like andrew chafin keone kayla kirby yates was on the market still darrow dace was on the market still Brad Hand was still in the market. It's probably going to be cheaper. Like, did, how poorly of an organization, it's staggering. It's incredible to see how poorly of an organization these, these the White Sox are, are ran. It's so terrible. Their owner, they hired Tony the fucking La Russa. He's, he's another terrible manager. He, he's, he's racist. He's, he's old. He's, he's going to, like, die soon at this point. I'm, I'm no just. <laughs> intended but he's probably gonna die at some point very soon you, you got guys who are more analytically inclined it, it's like it made no sense and i i'm sorry you know i sound very harsh but these are the facts you know and I facts don't about your feelings which is probably tony Relusa, tony Relusa, larusa is very like his favorite saying facts don't care about your feelings and if you're gonna go sign a guy like larusa a guy you know I, I think bauer can end up there sorry this is about trevor bauer i'm going on about how much i fucking hate the white Sox. if you're gonna sign a guy like larusa you know, it, it makes no sense. There's really no logic behind it. And as for Bauer, White Sox rotation is not that very good. You know, it, it's okay. They've got Julio, I think, is going to be very good this year. 
Yeah. Lynn's okay. I think they give a bit too much for Lynn. Keigel's not good. Cease is not good. Kovac is definitely a question mark coming off Tommy John surgery. Um, we'll see how that goes at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, I have Bowery one of the White Sox. If he's in up there, I, I'd say the Mets and Angels are pretty much, I think those three teams are pretty much the most likely destinations at this point. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my two or like 10 cents on it because it was a bit of a rant. Um, Ryan, do you have any other thoughts? I just want to say, and I, I know you posted this too. Congratulations to the Minnesota Twins on acquiring the best shortstop in the division. Congratulations, guys. Uh, man, so it's another year of Tim Anderson not being the best shortstop in the division. Wow. Crazy streak, you know, three straight years. Yeah, wow, that's, a, that's incredible. Wow, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm not much shocked. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm glad we can award a good shortstop who can play defense and a very good defensive player uh, this best shortstop in the AL Central award. And I'm very also, I'm very glad to uh, say that uh, the Yankees are probably going to bring back Be- Brett Gardner, even though I don't really like him uh, yeah. for the Yankees right now. Uh, he's probably going to be better than Adam Eaton for $3 million. The Yankees don't even need him. Uh, so I take pride in that kind of, uh, just because it's funny. Uh, it, it's hilarious to think that, the, think about it. They could have signed like Hand and O'Day for $12.5 million combined. Or no, it would have been $13 million total, which is the same amount of the AAV Hendricks got. And they could have ended up with two relievers instead of one. Uh, with less a financial commitment, but no, they wanted to overspend on one relievers. You know, you do you. Anyways, That's their thing. It, overpaying is their thing. It's their slogan. It's their it's their brand. Like if you need that, you're thinking about a team, but the most poorly ran organization. You're probably thinking Rockies. You're thinking Pirates. No, I'm thinking the Chicago fucking White Sox. Okay, I'm gonna go Rockies over them any day. All right, all right, they fine. Know they're what the hell they're doing the White, the Reds, the exactly. Rockies. Sorry, they're in a whole White different Sox. league of garbage. Like yeah. what the White Sox are up there, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they go and like go over the luxury tax and like try to sign. I don't know who's available. Still, going to sign Nelson Cruz to like a the Nelson two, Cruz, like sixty a, like a million dollar deal. deal. Nelson Cruz a five year deal. He's gonna walk or walk out of the plate because he's making thirty million dollars a year. Because it's very <laughs> White Sox esque. Um, if you're a White Sox fan listening to this, if you're a good fan, you know. There are very few of you guys. I feel bad, but if you're not, if you're like one of those typical White Sox fans, I really don't give a fuck, you know? Now, there are a couple of them I like. There's some of my, uh, some of my mutuals on Twitter. Some, some of my there, boys there, out there. Some tolerable White Sox fans. Yeah. Shout out to them. They're my boys. Um, that's pretty much all we have on our starting pitcher market. Well, I mean, for me, at least, Ryan, do you have anything else about the starters? Nah, he covered all of it. All right. Okay, now. Moving on to our next segment in this podcast, we have trivia. This is uh, hosted by our producer. One of our producers, we have two. One of them, James Valentinas. I believe I'm winning by a point because I got the easy question right and you didn't, Ryan. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's, no, it's it was six the to easy five. one. It's the six to five. Was, I know, but it is six to five, but it wasn't the easy one. All I know is I'm winning by Wait, a point. how is it not the easy one? Because the easy one was the uh, Phillies one that we both got wrong. We forgot the Phillies went to back to back. Yeah, but he got, the, he got the other easy one wrong, right? Yeah. I got or the it. easy one, right? Oh, no, he yeah, got his. He got, thought, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no, he right. got his easy one, right? Yeah, that's right. So um, take it away, James. You know, you got it. We're listening. Trivia time. All right. I'll start with Jack. Easy question. Okay. Uh, only two pitchers in, his, in the history of baseball have made more starts than Don Sutton. Who are they? How is this easy? It's it's the two pitchers who made the most starts in the history of baseball. It can't be that hard. Uh, Walter Johnson? Is that one of them? Well, no. Fuck, I don't I don't know. I, I really don't. I, I don't. Do you want to steal? I, I think I know one of them. It's one of them is Cy Young, right? Yeah, and then who's the other one? Uh the other one. Is it is it uh Christy Matthewson? That's a good guess. Uh, it's no. Cy Young and Nolan Ryan. Oh, oh Nolan Ryan. Oh, I should have remembered. He's the ERA. I mean, the innings merchant. I should have remembered that. He, I he's mean, played, I, he played like 30 years. Yeah, yeah but I, all these old pitchers pitched like nine innings every single time. So that's why I assume. Yeah, he but, was but we're, not in, we're not talking about innings. We're talking about games. Oh, starts. But they, oh, there's okay. also like three starters. Back okay. Ron Ryan. Uh, Do I get half a point? Or? No. Damn it. Because then you'd have to get third points for this question. Yeah. Uh, Ryan's easy question like is, three players have won at least three MVPs in the 2000s decade. Name them. Um, Mike Trout. I said 2000s. Nice try. Oh, 2000, so just 2000s. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, mm, uh, Barry Bonds. Is he okay, that's yeah, one. He did. Yeah. Uh, I got to think American League now. Um, uh, did he win many? Uh, no, I don't think he did. I hear yeah. typing, Jack. What? Yeah, I hear typing too. I heard typing. Hold oh, on, oh, my hands up. Sorry. Uh, so it's Barry Bonds, uh, Albert Pujols. That's two. Um, shoot, I'm really upset. Like, cause I think I'm gonna get this one wrong. I I think I'm gonna save it, not say who I think it is. Um, is that Alex Rodriguez? Yes, let's go. Was it? It was Alex Rodriguez. Oh yeah. I'm yes. Out. Okay. Okay. I was gonna almost not say. Okay. Him. So now like... we're t- now we're tied six six. Yep. Mm-hmm. This question is a little complicated. So if you don't understand it at first, just let me know. Okay. Uh, which two players hold the record for most home runs in their career, not one season, as teammates? Uh, this is for like, Jack. They like play play together. Yeah. Like how many did they hit while playing on the same team? Wow. Team like a year or like like a year? No, like, not like a like a fucking. Okay, so how about after? How about post integration? Oh, would it be um Gary and Ruth? No, that would have been before integration. <laughs> but <Post> integration. <laughs> All right, Ryan said he knew this one. So wait, wait. So this answer was originally post uh integration. Yeah, I mean the answer is post integration. Oh, okay. Like, so you, the, I, I thought okay. Um, so if it's post integration, but it's it... also all time, it's not like it's only po- like, yeah, it's no, 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 I get, get no, no, I, I get what you're saying now. No, because okay. that's why I asked. I thought if it was like because I originally thought it was Gehrig and Ruth, but then you said post integration, it's not it's like, okay. Oh, I think um, I know this. Damn if it. it's post integration, then it would be, um, would it be, oh, oh my god, Maze and Stargen, Stargen, you mean Stargel, but. Yeah, but okay. When I asked Jackson, his guess was Mays and McCovey. Wait, let, let me get. Oh, but that's also not right. Uh, yeah. Jack, you can take a guess, but it won't count. Can Seiko and McGuire? No, it's Hank Aaron and Eddie Matthews. Played together. Right, Eddie Matthews. Okay. He's a whole first baseman. No, I think he's a. No, I know he's a third baseman, but doesn't matter. Oh, first baseman. He played first and third. Uh, who hit the last home run of the 2020 season, including the playoffs? So basically, who hit the last home run in the World Series? This is for you, Ryan. <laughs> that is oh. bullshit. That is so easy. You don't I know. know. Uh, I know. He's, he doesn't. He doesn't seem to know it. <laughs> is it Corey Seager? Is it Corey Seager? No, Jack. You can steal it oh, then. No, <laughs> you're both wrong. This was what? the it wasn't, was it? it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't Corey, it was, Corey Bellinger it was, to get the NLCS one. Oh, it was yeah. Betts. Yeah, Ooh, I forgot he two homers in game six. Yeah. Who did? Mookie Betts. Betts. Okay, I thought it was Seager. Oh, they did eighth inning one against. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't watch that last game. I only watched I, the last inning. Damn it. I should have remembered so, that. Only you you acted game. like that was so easy. I thought you were going to get it. Well, I thought I was going to get it too, but I didn't. So. It wasn't Bellinger. <laughs> All right. No, so, Bellinger do sh- no, so Jackson said this was an easy question. This was a longer time at the beginning. And I didn't know it, so I made it a hard question. Okay. Super easy. Uh, what team did Babe Ruth play for prior to the Boston Red Sox? Or what team was he on? He didn't actually play for them. I think I was right before when I just said it was the Braves, right? That was my guess, and we're both wrong. He played for the Braves after the Yankees, I think. Okay. Was it the Reds? No. It was the Orioles, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, okay. what? No, because I remember they switch. It was I remember the story. He was gonna either be a red. I think the Reds had a shot to pick him up from the Orioles, or the Orioles had a shot to pick him up from the Reds, and I couldn't remember. But I knew it was one of those two teams. I read it in the book. Okay, well, well, you were wrong. So yeah, but uh, that was that was uh, that should have been a medium question. That isn't a hard hard question. Like, that's harder than the other question, in my opinion. Well, it is harder than the other question. It was harder than the question about the home runs together. I think that was harder than that one. I think the home runs together wasn't that hard. Like I got that right away, but yeah, it, was, it was pretty hard. It was pretty bad. <laughs> That's fucked up. I There's so many <laughs> careers that, like, you would have to uh, understand both when both careers perfectly align up. So, all right. Well, yeah. 
Well, I guess this one would also like the hint was that people have been like talking about Hank Aaron a lot, obviously. Oh uh, yeah, okay. That would have yeah. I didn't think about it like that, but you know. All right, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Hard question. And this was actually surprisingly hard. Who was the first left handed pitcher to win the Cy Young? Was it it's not a recent. It can't be like the last thirty years, right? Is it? It can't be. It's I'm not telling you. The Cy Young's been around. I don't even know how long the Cy Young's been around for. That's bad. That's bad on my part. It can't be. It, it can't be. I'm gonna just say it. Like I don't think this is right at all. Like I don't think this is close to right. Is it Randy Johnson? It's not him, but it, it, it's not. Okay. Okay, Jack got it. How did you know? <laughs> I was reading a uh, there were it was a post about on this date. Um, it was just oh, okay. on this day, and they were talking about Warren Spawn, and it was the Cyan thing they mentioned it. So I do remember that. Is that where you then, got the from? No, I, I I actually what I was gonna do was I was gonna ask who the first pitcher to win the MVP was, but that would have been way too hard. And then I was gonna ask who was the first pitcher to win the MVP after the Cy Young started. Like after they started giving out a pitcher's award, right? Like Koufax, and that one would have been. I think it was. Uh, I don't remember. It might have been Koufax. It wasn't him. It was uh oh. some Dodgers guy. I like I I know who I'm thinking of. I just can't think of the name. Oberhurton. Uh, no, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, uh Newcomb. Yeah, Newcomb. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he's a, he's a there you go. That so I was gonna ask that, but then I stuck with this one. So Valens I think Wayne we're at the Dodgers. What? No, Valenzuela. I don't know. He pitched in like Valenzuela. Yeah. yeah. So, so we are at eleven to six in favor of Jack now. Damn, I'm getting killed. Well, it's one question because it's one three five for e- yeah. easy, medium, hard. No, I'm still getting. I'm getting cream, baby. That's not All good. right. So that concludes our trivia portion of this podcast. Yeah. Thanks so much to everyone who tuned in and has made it to this point. If you like this, leave us a five-star rating on Spotify and Apple Music. Check out our Instagram at uh, – what's the Instagram at? Deep Drive uh, Podcast? Or, it's well, at, like, deep underscore drive underscore pod. Deep and which is – pod. Go check that out. Go check out um, my Instagram at Elloweeners. If you didn't already uh, – if you don't already know, if you haven't already been there, I'm sure you have, though. Um, go check out Yankee Stat Talk, which is Ryan's personal YouTube channel. Yes, Talks sir. About, you know, statistics, Yankees, pretty much. I think all we're going to be talking about any baseball, all all baseball, or just Yankees. Uh, I talk about Yankees, but I'm going to do a couple of top uh, ten lists for each position. So, Great. That's so there's that. Next. Follow us on Twitter at Rosenthal Two N Y Y and at Ryan Garcia E S M. I have better tweets. It's been a deep drive to left field, and we are out for this week. Thank you. <laughs>